Greetings. Greetings and welcome to worship here at the St. James St. Matthew Lutheran Church on this Palm Sunday in the year 2021. Just a quick heads up as to what's happening this Holy Week. I just want to let you know that there will be a, a Monday Thursday devotional available for each and every one of you to view this Thursday evening as well as Good Friday. Both will be posted on our website and the YouTube channel. It is our hope that this should be up and running by 7 p.m. on Thursday, that is the Monday Thursday, and by noon, 12 noon, on Good Friday. I pray that they would all be a blessing to you, especially during this time. Let us begin now with our apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us join together in the singing or hymn of inspiration, or inspirational hymn, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. from Psalm 31. 
Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten out of mind. I am useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the proud. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter, beginning to read at the 12th verse. Five days before the Passover, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So, so they went and took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it was written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to begin with a, a question today. And that question is, were you ever in a situation in which you needed to borrow something? Anything? Well, someone visiting Israel once shared as his tour group stepped off their bus on the top of Mount Olives. Right by the bus, were a couple of local men, some locals there. One of the men asked, would you like to borrow a donkey to ride down the hill? Perhaps you would sit on it and one of us, we can take your picture. No one in the group took up the offer, especially after hearing that it was $50 for the picture and $150 to borrow the donkey. For us tourists, he says, it was enough. It was enough to know that we were on the same road with Jesus. That's right, for this was the route that Jesus took when he entered into the city of Jerusalem. According to our gospel lesson, the donkey was found and most likely, most likely borrowed. Jesus wants to borrow the young donkey. And this is what I would like for you to focus on today, on this Palm Sunday. Something borrowed. Anyone familiar with this story knows how exciting it was. For hundreds of people lined the road of the city. For Passover, the festival of Passover, the holiday was near. Five days, we are told by John. And anticipation filled the air. Jesus chooses to join the festive parade in this manner. He is the one that everyone awaits. He is the rightful ruler of God's people, but not Caesar. He comes to redeem the people from the oppression of the empire. And they sing, Hosanna, they sing, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed 
as the king of Israel. But Jesus, but Jesus comes on a borrowed donkey. So what kind of king is this, you may ask? Think about it. Jesus was born in a borrowed shelter, laid in a borrowed manger, and as he grew up and he traveled, he had no place to rest, no place of his own to sleep. So what do you think? Jesus rode into the city on a borrowed donkey. He ate his final meal in the upper room of a borrowed place. And on his crucifixion, he was crucified on a borrowed cross. The soldiers stuck a borrowed crown on his head. And after he died, after he died, someone buried him, placed him in a borrowed tomb. Jesus was an all-out borrower. But he did not grasp, he did not hold on to the things that were given to him, for he gave it away freely, including his life. According to the Apostle Paul, Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient, obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. I'm going to let that sink in for a moment because this is where we see the benefits of Jesus' life and death. For this is where it benefits you. Jesus did not have very much. Just the tunic, I would imagine, on his body and the pair of sandals on his feet. Yet, yet he commanded the same of those of his followers. When you go out, he said, when you go out to proclaim the good news, take no money. No backpack, no extra tunic, no extra shoes, not even a walking stick. Take only a word of peace. Borrow the bed that is given to you and proclaim that God's kingdom has come near. At its very core, sharing the good news of God's love for the world does not need a lot of props. All it takes is a living, breathing person embodying the Christ in word and deed. This is remarkable. Remarkable, especially in our culture today, bent on consumption. Materialism and consumerism infect a lot of otherwise good-believing Christians. But today, Today we remember how a savior of the world, the one who borrows a donkey and rides it downhill to his cross, offers his all. Once a guest master at the monastery described why he kept no possessions other than the, the clothes on his back. He explained it this way. If your closet is empty, there is more room for God. I'll say it again. If your closet is empty, there is more room for God. Contrast this to a child who jumps over a pile of dirty laundry only to say, Mom, I have nothing to wear. Or an adult surrounded by so much hurt and countless in need today declaring, I am bored. I have nothing to do. You see, you see, there is beauty to simplicity, to not owning much and needing very little. Those with this freedom will pay attention to the people around them. Little distracts them from the deep needs of the world. And nothing, nothing competes with their imagination or faithfulness to their call to self-sacrifice and service to all. Today, today we remember how Jesus gave himself to the world. And on this festive day, he rides a borrowed donkey into the center of the city that will reject him. A person with a few possessions who emptied himself of all that he has. My friends, Jesus did this 
for your benefit and to benefit the saving world. And God keeps on doing this saving work, setting you free from all selfishness and claiming you in the name of Jesus, who owned very little and who ultimately wishes to possess your heart. So welcome him today. Welcome him with your own Hosanna. For blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Our hymn for today is Prepare the Royal Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and certainty, that we may always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they may serve those in greatest need. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. 
accompany all who suffer in these times of global pandemic. Grant respite and renewal. Comfort those whose lives were changed forever by re recent mass shootings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You inspire the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to the people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello, dear friends. Until we meet again, I pray that you stay well. Stay connected, keep washing your hands, Maintain a safe, safe distance from those outside of your homes. Mask up and get vaccinated. Look out for our month, our Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday devotionals, and have a reflective Holy Week. And now receive this blessing. Receive this blessing as we take our leave. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-given Trinity. Amen. Our sending hymn on this Palm Sunday is the Old Rugged Cross.